Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, here for AllenHudson.com. I love the look of watercolor and it's something I'm still practicing. There's so many variables to it. Paper, brushes, types of watercolors, and how much water to use. I'm having fun trying to figure out what works best for me, but I'm not where I'd like to be yet. So it's great that there are some really easy techniques that allow you to get a quick and easy freehand watercolor look with stamps and inks that you already have on hand. I'm going to use the Solid Heart stamp from the Essentials by Ellen High Five set, which has a bunch of really fabulous sentiments for cards to send to people you're missing right now, even though it was released a little while ago. I'm also using an A2 sized panel of Ranger watercolor cardstock since I'll be adding water to my stamping. I'm putting it smooth side up. This helps the water to spread more evenly, and I'm using my Misty, but that's optional, and I'll give you some tips as we go along for doing these techniques without a stamping tool. I place the heart stamp in what I call the prime position. This is where I'll put my sentiment, so I find it's helpful to start here and then build my pattern around it. So here's the faux watercolor technique. I'm using Catherine Pooler party dress here, as well as a little flirty fuchsia just around one edge, and then use a spray bottle to spritz clean water over it. Two or three light spritzes should do it. Then close the door and stamp it down. Leave the stamp on the paper for a second or two to allow that ink to transfer into the paper, and generally I don't press it down too hard because I want to preserve the crisp edges of the heart. If you want, you can use a paper towel to lift up ink from an area that looks maybe too dark, like I did here, but once I've done that, I just let it dry on its own. The inks will blend and have that watery look that I'm going for. I'm creating a pattern of different color hearts, so I quickly measure the height of the heart by counting the lines on the lid of my Misty, and then moving my paper up by that same number of lines on the mouse pad. By doing this each time, my hearts will be perfectly evenly spaced. And don't forget to double check by partially closing the door. Here I realized that I wanted the hearts a little closer together, so I adjusted my measurement and I knew I needed to move the paper by five spaces each time. Once the paper is in position, then I can just ink up the stamp with my next color combination, this time it's tiara and orange twist, and continue the process of using different two color combinations. My third heart was orange twist and party dress. When it's time to stamp the heart above the first one I stamped, I simply move the cardstock down by those five grid lines. This means the bottom of the panel is hanging over the bottom of the misty, but that's fine as long as I remember not to press down too hard on that door right there. When it's time to stamp another column of hearts, I use the same counting technique, but this time I move the paper to the left. Again, I check the positioning and adjust as necessary before actually doing any stamping. I follow the same process of moving the paper up and down the misty to complete the column of hearts, and I switch up my colors on each one, trying to keep a good mix of the different color combinations. If I was going to stamp this same pattern with an acrylic block instead of a misty, I could just eyeball the pattern. Because it's a simple grid pattern with a basic shape, it wouldn't be difficult, and any imprecision would really just add to the hand-drawn look of this. Another way would be to use a pencil to lightly draw in grid lines so you would have an approximate idea of where to stamp your heart each time. Then you just erase the lines when everything's dry at the end. Next, it's time to stamp the column to the left, and this means I need to move the cardstock to the right. Oh, and here's something else I need to tell you. Because of all the water I'm using, the stamp and the misty lid are pretty wet, so the stamp will likely move when you're cleaning it sometimes. Just reposition the clean stamp on your cardstock and continue. I've got my cardstock hanging out over the right edge of the misty here, and if I'd been thinking, I could have moved it back onto the mouse pad and just lined up my stamp at that point, but this worked. I finished off the panel and I let it dry completely. Next, I thought it would be fun to add some gold splatter. So I got out my Altenew metallic watercolors and I spritzed some water into one of the gold shades to activate it. I loaded my brush with the pigment and then I used another brush to tap on and create some splatter. My drops were all very small and fine and it added a subtle shine to the cardstock. Next, I trimmed down one of the sentiment stamps from the new Voices in My Head Volume 3 set, from I Miss Your Face to I Miss You. I used my Mini Misty this time and I stamped it with VersaFine Onyx ink. Next, I chose a large essential square die to trim my panel down. I'm keeping these dies on a binder ring rather than in a pocket, just because there's so many of them. This is such an easy way to be able to quickly grab all of them and pull out the one I need. 
I love to make square cards that are four and a quarter inch squares. I think squares have a modern feel, and this size fits into an A2 sized envelope, so there's no extra postage required. I positioned the die over the portion of the panel that I wanted, and then I ran it through my Gemini Junior. To add a bit more shine, I chose a few pearl white jewels from Pretty Pink Posh, and I attached them using a jewel picker and some Nouveau Deluxe liquid adhesive. They're subtle, but they have such a pretty sparkle when they catch the light. To finish the card, I put it onto a 110 pound white card base to preserve the light and airy feel of the heart pattern. This is such a great method for stretching your stamps and inks to get a watercolor look, and I hope you're inspired to give it a try. Supplies are listed on the blog post, which is linked in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.